the only thing that is required in trading after you learned and you, you found your edge on the markets is stick to the plan. Stick to the plan when it's raining, when it's shiny, when it's winter, when it's summer. Stick to the plan and you will find the rainbow. Hello everyone and welcome back to another TFT interview. Today I have the pleasure to host Freddy who already reached the maximum allocation in TFT and got five payouts. Welcome Freddy. Hi, hi Anna, nice to meet you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure for me to host you as well. How are you doing today? I'm fine, thank you. And you? How are you doing? I'm, I'm great. So can you start with introducing yourself and telling us uh, more about yourself, your background? And uh, yeah, what's your name and how you started with trading? Okay, so I'm Freddy. I'm 23 years old. And now I'm living in, in Dubai. I'm from Italy. I was born in Italy. I was raised in Italy. And uh, do some, some, let's say, financial stuff. I moved here in Dubai. I started my journey with trading in uh, June 2020 after the first uh, lockdown of COVID because I was searching online how to be, become a millionaire and so on and so forth. And uh, trading was one of the millions of opportunity around the, the worldwide on the websites. So I started with trading. I've blown a lot of accounts. I don't even remember them because I wasn't uh, a proper risk manager. Okay. I was thinking that trading was like gambling. But after uh, that experiences, I found that I had to study the industry to become uh, a part of the industry and take my, my, my own part. So what kind of trader are you? Are you a swing trader, day trader, scalper? I'm a day trader. I'm an intraday trader. So I open and close my, my position during the day. Okay. And uh, what did you struggle with the most during your trading journey? And how did you overcome those struggles? Okay, the I think the the first part that I the first obstacle that I found was the patience because in this industry uh, during all the social media and so on we saw we see a lot of people uh, have a lot of things and say yeah I I bought this thing uh, with trading and with this um, social media things we are trying to rush the process and we are not patients we don't have patience in the process so i found myself in a rush a lot of times like uh, going into formal trades okay and so on and how i over overcame all of that uh, making back test okay making back test i knew my my edge my statistic edge and that made me feel calm because if in the short run I'm, go I'm going during, a, a, how do you say, a streak of stop losses. There is no problem because I know my numbers. And in the long run, I'm going to take my part from the, from the markets. Okay, so the back test made me more confident on respecting the process, okay, and take step after step only by respecting my plan. Actually, it's almost the same like me. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you find TFT and how is your experience with us? Uh, I was already uh, trading for other prop firms. And um, after I max, I reached the maximum location with the, my former prop firm, I, uh, I went to internet and search for other prop firms to May maximize okay my skills by the the capitalization so i found tft after the two top leaders in the market that all we know mm -hmm. and um, i started the journey with tft in november of 2022 okay and till now i'm here and the first thing that i found in tft that is something that is the top is the best is the customer support and there is the customer support 24 7 live they are going to reply you after maybe 10 minutes okay and they are very polite and they go to the solution so i'm very proud of this this customer support i'm glad to hear that <laughs> when did your trading got to the get to the next level like when did you become profitable after how long time? Okay, so I started my journey in June 2022, uh, 2020, sorry, 
um, thinking that I'm going to be rich in two months. Okay, <laughs> after two months of blowing account, <laughs> <laughs> after two months of blowing only blowing accounts, I I said okay, I have to stay here study. And after six months, I was let's say seeing some profits, but I wasn't consistent. So it was let's say up and downs. But I I found that consistency after one year. Okay, because I decided to close myself, okay, with my computer, my laptop, with my strategy, with trading view, and make the back test that made me feel confident, like I said um pri prior. Okay. And from there I I scale up my, my trading skills and all my accounts. Yeah. Did you learn everything by yourself or you had a mentor? You joined any communities? I joined to, um to three community three communities now okay i had my first experience with a, a network marketing company that has also a forex service for uh, studying and so on and there i i started and i learned the concept how to make everything uh, clear on on myself and so on so let's say it was my um middle school okay and then i went let's say professional but uh, going after other mentors and the thing i said to every every people or every person that asked me freddy how you do it how who i'm going to follow the thing that i say is take the best and leave the rest mm -hmm. so i'm also uh, someone who like to study all the markets the in and outs but i don't take everything for granted okay i take all the thing you you are teaching me okay that's fine but then i'm going to test it on my emotional side, my, how do you say, my timeline, my time base, all the um, sessions. And then I figure out what is going to match with my strategy. Yeah. So so you said three communities in total. Yeah. Yeah. But is your strategy from one of the communities or you made it yourself? Like you pick the best parts of all of them? Let's take is a hybrid. Let's say it's a hybrid. So I, I take, I took some, some parts from here and from there. Yeah. So would you like to share your strategy with us and show us a recent trade that you took? Yeah, why not? Okay, so I'm going to share the screen. Okay, so uh, here is, is my chart. I, um, I prefer to not um, use the color green and red, okay, for an uh, emotional and mindset thing, because when we see green, we associate with, okay, profit is good. And when we see red, it's like, oh my God, it's not going. So I try to detach the emotional side on everything, like colors, uh, alerts, and so on. So here we are uh, in front of a uh, USD uh, CHF, okay? Uh, this is a trade that I took the, the last week. So I'm going to, to show uh, the trade. So the blue the blue candle, the light blue candles are the bullish candles and the green candles are the uh, bearish candles. Mm -hmm. So the things that the thing that I'm going to do that I'm doing uh, consistently is a multi time frame uh, con consideration. Okay, so I started from the daily, then I'm go down on the H4, H1, M15, and then I entry on the M1. So let's delete all the drawings. Let's remove it. So on the daily side, I focus on the structure because the daily is going to tell me uh, overall on the week what is going to happen. Okay, so now in the daily side, we, we see that the market is shifting the momentum. So now we are bullish. Okay, so we came here like this. And then we break through the last maximum. Okay, so now I can consider this market bullish because it was also made a retracement. He confirmed a higher low and then is going to go, uh, going to make a higher high. So daily we are bullish. Let's go on the H4. On the H4, what's, what we are going to, to, to see, what are we seeing? We're seeing that the impulsivity of the market is bearish now because we see this impulse, okay? Mm -hmm. So I work with supply and demand. Mm -hmm. I work uh, with supply and demand for um, where the market is going to reach some level and can have some reaction and where it's going to break. So here we can see a break of structure on the H4. Mm -hmm. 
that we can sign. So I, as we are seeing, I'm always mark up my charts because when I'm watching my charts, I want to know what is going on with a blink, within a blink. So, so I, I want clarity. So here is where the last impulse started. So I'm going to mark it like a supply on H4. As I said, I'm going to detach all the emotional side from the colors. So my supplies are not red, are gray. Okay. So I know that the market is, pro is probably going to reach this zone after having a, a before having a reaction or maybe during during the daily time frame maybe it's going to break this side so let's go on the h1 and this for now is our target on the h1 we are bullish we can see that the market is consistently making higher highs and high, higher lows okay and which is my zone where i'm going to uh, wait the market before taking a long position till this side and maybe another higher high on the daily side. This is my last point of demand. Okay, the last point where the market started an impulsive move. So this is my demand on the H1. Okay, which are my targets? My targets are imbalances and liquidity. So here I can see that I have an imbalance, okay? And I also watch um, if in the imbalance, let's say in between of the imbalance, we have some um, psychological number, okay? So here we have the 250, okay? So if this zone is going to give me an evidence, a confirmation entry, I'm going to take a long trade till this point. Okay, because this point with the supply, with the imbalance, and also with the number, it, it could be a point of reaction. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm going down to the 15 minutes to make everything clearer. Okay, so to have a, a better position. And I can see that, that the H1 demand can be reduced in this single candle on the M15. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to change this H1 in M15 and I'm going to draw it. So what I'm going to, um, to wait, I'm going to wait that the market is coming on the zone mm -hmm. and in the zone gives me at M1 a, a structural confirmation. So a break of structure. Mm -hmm. And after the break of structure, I can position myself on the retest to go on my target, okay? So let's make the market go forward. Let's go down on the one minute. This is our zone. Okay. Let's wait and see if the market is coming on the zone. Okay. Now the market touched our zone. So um, in my day life, trading life, what I'm going to do, I'm going to mark up the chart and every supply and demand, I'm going to put an alert. Okay. And when the alert is ringing is because the price touched a supply or a demand like in this case. So now I'm coming on, on the charts and what I'm looking for, I'm looking for a liquidity grab and then a break of structure. This is my last point where the market has the power, let's say so, of making a lower low. So I'm waiting that the market is going to break this line with all the candle body. So now let's wait. Okay, the, mar the market broke this, um, this part. So I'm going to position myself using the number theory. So 00, 00 20, 50, oh, and 80. Yeah. Okay. And here we can see that we have the 650. Okay. Just on the uh, opening of this demand on M1. So I'm going to place my stop loss two pips under the last point because I saw that in these times they're going to grab after one pips of the week and they, they, then they go. So it's better safe than sorry. So I'm going to take two pips after. So yeah. seven pips yeah. of stop some loss. Hmm? Pardon? It, to give some breathing room to the, yes. <laughs> to the price. 
Yes, that's that's also a thing that I I struggle with. I also want to have a tighter st a stop loss to have a higher risk reward, but it, maybe there are some cases and some people that are profitable with that. But with my emotional side, it's not working, so I have to adjust it. So let's go back on the charts here on the six fifty. I'm going to place my uh, buy limit order. Okay. And with all the markups that I made, I already know where I'm going to take profit. So this is my take profit side, the imbalance that we draw um, uh, prior. Okay. And this uh, psychological number. In do the meanwhile, I'll... do you take pardon? Do you take partials? Yes. Anyway? I take partials on imbalances or liquidity grabs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here also, I can see there is this single week liquidity, okay, because here are many stop losses for who is going on the sell side. So here, probably we are going to have a reaction and then I'm going to take some partials on all the side where we can have a reaction. You can also go on the 15 minutes, another um, middle step between our entry and our take profit level is this one on the 15 minutes. Here we have another imbalance. So here also, I'm going to take a partial. How I'm working with a partial, I'm going to take 50% uh, on the first partial, 25% on the second one, and I leave the rest to the final TP. So I have maximum three TPs, TP1, TP2, and TP3, okay? So this was the trade, and this was all the, how do you say, um, the explanation of it, okay? So I was, as we... We, see, we, we can see we had the first reaction on the first imbalance. So it's quite good to take some partials. So we also have, how do you say, a moment. Yes, okay, we can relax. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. And then we can let all the, the rest of the trade go through, through its journey. Okay. And I believe you put your stop loss to break even after the partial, right? Yes. I put my stop loss in break even after the price is in profit, mm -hmm. the double of my stop loss. So when my risk reward is on one to two, mm -hmm. I'm going to put my stop loss in break even. Okay, and what is more important to, according to you, win rate or risk to reward? Uh, for me, um, it, none of one is important. It's important the correlation between them mm -hmm. because I know also traders that are, are uh, trading with one to one risk reward and all the newbie, sorry for that, but let's say newbie traders are saying, oh no, one-to-one, -one, what, what kind of trading is that? It's nothing, right? <laughs> <laughs> but if you have 90% win rate, you are above the 95% of the, of the traders. Yeah. That's also the risk reward. Maybe someone can show you a risk reward one to 20, but doesn't have it, even has the, like you say, 3% of win rate. So yeah. it's not profitable. Yeah. So we, we have to, to know that there's a correlation between them and none of them is better alone, standing alone. I totally agree. Yeah. So can you please tell me what is your psychology towards trading and uh, what have you done to improve your psychology do, during your journey? Okay. Um, I when I started, uh, as I said, I started with a network marketing company, and in network marketing, uh, the mindset side, the personal growth side is um, is a leverage because you are already in uh, an environment of positive people, people who uh, are striving to take the best out of you. Okay, and that is is really important. So the first uh, suggestion that I can give. To, to a person who is going to go in the trading side is to put himself or herself in a positive environment that is not put you putting you down, but is trying to elevate yourself. And I think that in trading, 95 to 99% of trading is psychology because everyone can see a break of structure, a last candle, institutional candle, how you want to call them, okay? But not everyone is able to develop himself every and each single day. Not everyone is able to uh, switch on their forever um, student mentality, 
Okay. And for me, the psychology is really the important thing. If you can see, I have also some, some <laughs> draws on, yeah. uh, on my walls and how I can, I develop them and develop them uh, here into podcasts. Okay. Personal growth, uh, because all the personal growth is um, oriented on make you more self-aware on your emotions or no on knowing yourself because trading is 90 percent knowing how to react react properly on your emotion after a stop loss after a take profit because maybe after two take profits there are some traders that oh i'm invincible let let me over leverage but no <laughs> okay yeah. it, it, it's not going like that so Psychology is the most important, most important thing, and a uh, um, book that I suggest for ev every trader is Trading in the Zone. I love Trading it. in the Zone of Mark Douglas. There are some a lot of nuggets about psych psychology, trading, and so on. Yeah, definitely. I love this book as well. Uh, and do you have a journal? Do you journal your trades and your psychology? Yes, I trade, I journal every and each single trade and every Saturday morning, I'm going to review all sing, all the single trades. So on the next week, I can start the week knowing my prior week error. Okay. And so I'm, I'm not going to reply that errors. That thing of re, not only journaling, because, because there are um, people that is journaling, but never go back on the journal. So it's like n not journaling at all because the journal is there to review the errors and learn from them. Okay. Yeah, totally agree. And improve all the time. Work. Yeah. How was the reaction of your close ones when they understood that you're trading and did it have any impact on your psychology, mindset and performance? Okay. Um, from the people who were um, around of me, okay, they because uh, let me take a step back when i decided to take trading seriously i closed myself three months straight in during the um, the summertime okay so when my friends were calling me freddy uh, come and hanging out i was telling no I, i'm focused i'm going to to do my thing and they would say no leave it there that is not worth it and after that after the three months I came out with all my res results. Some some of them took inspiration from that, mm -hmm. and some of them uh, were were telling me, "No, he's he's only joking. Maybe he's going to to work maybe one or two years, and then after he's going to his nine to five. So um, for me, on my side, it hadn't um, hasn't had a psychology okay impact. Mm -hmm. Because I was able to stay by myself that three months, and on that three months, I knew myself, I knew my my flaws, I knew my my pros, okay, and I was able to create that mindset where only my ju judgment it it's the judgment that it counts, okay, mm -hmm. and if somebody is going to say to me, oh, you are phenomenal, I will say, okay, thank you. If someone is going to tell me you're a failure, same reaction. Okay, thank you. So I'm really, let's say, stable on that. That's amazing approach. <laughs> um, okay. How are you dealing with the losing streak? Okay. I how I deal this is my question. Um with the losing streak, I have a limit of drawdown, okay, daily and weekly. So on the daily side, after I I reach my minus two percent. Let's assume that I risk one percent every in each trade. If I reach the minus two percent in one day, in the single day, I'm going to close my chart. I'm going to have a walk, or I'm reading every everything I want. Okay. And on the weekly side, if I'm going to take a minus four percent, okay, of my account. So let's say uh, Monday I start with a balance of zero, mm -hmm. and at Thursday, I'm minus 4%. Then I'm going to close the charts for the week and came back uh, on the other week. Uh, this, um, well, um, this thing, this approach was giving me, um, one, the confidence to accept the losing days and the losing weeks. Mm -hmm. Because 
one of the most difference between profitable traders and not prof profitable traders is accepting that losing is a part of the game. Yeah. Okay, there is a book uh, that is called The Secret of Millionaire Mind that said that uh, losers uh, are playing to win and winners um, are playing to stay in the game. And this is trading simply because losers are going trade after trade after trade to be able to say, hey, I won 20% this day. Okay. Yeah. Winners are going stable and steady and saying, okay, I lose today, no problem. The only thing that I have to go into uh, throughout and going after is be able to stay in the game with my risk management and trusting all my uh, statistic edge with my strategy. So you said that you are a full-time trader. Uh, would you like to share uh, something from your personal um, experience, like, like life experience before trading and how you uh, reached the point of becoming a full-time trader? Okay. Um, before the, the COVID, I was working okay, like a web developer. So I was working from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., I was working from Monday to, to Friday. And when I started trading, I started trading with um, all limit orders because I hadn't had the time to watch the, the charts and so on. So also my trading evolved with my, with my professional life and all the free time I had before. So before trading, I, as I was saying, I was an employee, I was working, okay, like every normal person, um, the, ma the majority of people. And every, sing every and each single day after work, I was on the charts because I was when I was at work, I was thinking about the charts. When I was at uh, lunch break, I was thinking about the charts because I knew that trading uh, could be my, how do you say, um, ticket, okay, the past ticket to the life that I wanted. Okay, mm -hmm. so after my uh, trading skill improved, I moved my job to full time on part time. So I had also the time to make the New York session, New York session, because in Italy at 3 p.m. there is the New York session. So I worked on my job from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then I, when I come home, I'm going to stick on my charts and make the New York session. So now uh, during that habit, I'm more oriented to trade the New York session instead of the of of the London session or the or the Asian one. So okay. New York is your favorite session. Yeah, the New York session is my my favorite one. After I I developed all of all my skill and and so on, I left my job and moved on the uh, old full day trading. Okay. But I don't, I didn't only have trade has had trading since then. I had also other source of incomes because another suggestion I can give to who is watching is don't put all your eggs in only one basket. It's good to go vertical and become the best on one industry. That's that I'm all right. I'm okay with that. But if you are going in trading and trading is your only source of income, you are going after some emotional errors because there are money attached. Because if you are uh, striving to pay your bills and the only thing you have is trading, maybe there is some exception that is going to make it. But the majority of people is going to blow the account during the, the emotional course. Okay, yeah. So this is a suggestion. That I totally agree. And do you have any favorite pairs that you that you trade, or you trade like almost everything possible? Yeah, I I trade five per pairs. Mm -hmm. I took this decision uh, during my back test because during my back test I saw where I was more profitable, mm -hmm. and also uh, to limit myself on the opportunity that I can see on the market. Because um, when I started trading, I was looking all the pairs. And every day I was um, taking like five trades every single day because if you watch 26 pairs in Forex, every and each single moment you can find an opportunity okay. or create which mind an <laughs> opportunity to enter. Okay, so I limit myself with five pairs that are EU, GU, USD, uh, USD Swiss, um, 
NZ, NZD uh, US dollar and uh, t -t um, Euro British pound. Yeah, all, only these five pairs. Okay, can you please uh, tell us what are your future plans? Where do you see yourself in five years? And what are your goals in trade with trading and in life in general? Okay, uh, let's start with trading. Okay, with trading, I'm going to take advantage from this prop firm reality that is in our days because if you have the skill, the mindset and the risk management, you can use this money that they are literally borrowing you and uh, these prop firms to leverage and take that funds and create your own personal account. For me is how I'm treating, okay, let's say so, the prop firms. I'm not using all that money to living the lifestyle uh, and so on, buying clothes. Yeah, it's, it's quite good to give pleasures to ourselves, yeah. but also thinking about the futures and going to create a, other source of, or source of income and so on. Uh, which are my plans for from here to five year, years Okay, forward? Uh, I think that from now till five years, I'm going to own um, multiple companies. Okay, I will always remain on the Forex industry. So I also have some uh, um, personal courses where I, I do mentorships for, for people who want to, to trading and learn how I trade. So I, I think that the major part of my businesses will be trading oriented, okay, or financial markets oriented, but I also have um, the ambition to own some, some companies like restaurants, uh, bars, some apartments, okay, and so on. So I'm going to, to take advantage of this to create all my empire, okay? So let, let's take also the, the funded trader empire. Your kingdom. <laughs> yeah, being be like my kingdom, <laughs> okay? <laughs> uh, through all, all these opportunities that we have nowadays. Amazing. So what would you advise, uh, what advice would you give to new traders? To new traders, to... Um, Take yourself the time, um, make yourself has the time to experiment uh, various strategy, but let's say one month where you are going to uh, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. But after that month, take the de decision to follow only one methodology, one and only instructor, educator, mentor, how we want to call them, okay, and stick to the plan. The only thing that is required in trading after you learn and you, you found your edge on the markets is stick to the plan. Stick to the plan when it's raining, when it's shiny, when it's winter, when it's summer, stick to the plan and you will find the rainbow. It's been a pleasure to have you here and uh, you shared so many amazing words with us and I believe that all people that are going to watch this interview are going to get so much out of it because you shared so many nice advices and uh, uh, you have such an uh, amazing experience and everyone should definitely learn from it. So thank you so much for your time and thank you for being here. Thank you, Anna, for having me here and thank you, The Funded Trader, for all the opportunities that you're giving to all of, the, all of us. Yeah. our pleasure so to, to all of you watching thank you so much for watching don't forget to leave a like uh, show us some love in the comments down below and don't forget to hit the subscribe and notification button if you haven't done that yet as you can see from this video we have a lot to learn so you don't want to miss any such videos in the future stay safe and good luck with your trading